What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets and Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started with Chapman to the Mets, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my videos, love my content, want to see more, want to get notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So Matt Chapman to the Mets. Could it be possible? It's probably a long shot. Probably more of a long shot than Bryant and Suarez, but it's still interesting to talk about since there was discussion between the Mets and the Oakland A's. So when you talk about Matt Chapman, why would the Mets go after him, knowing that it'll probably cost more than Bryant and more than Suarez? Well, he is one of the best defensive third basemen in the league. He's better than Bryant and he's better than Suarez at third base, defensively, no doubt about it. And he's clearly better than J.D. Davis, guaranteed. That's obvious. But when it comes to offensively, he's, he's very, very good offensively. Power, run scorer, RBI guy. He's not very high in average, but again, he's one of the best third basemen in the league. And the reason why the Mets will go after him or possibly try to get him even though it might cost a lot prospect-wise, is because he's controllable, cheap, and young. And the Mets seriously look like they want to go after a third baseman that they can either control, that it don't cost too much money, and know that he can be a part of this Mets core for the next couple of years. That's why I kind of think, even though I did contradict myself a little bit a few seconds ago, Matt Chapman is more controllable than Bryant. Even though Bryant's been like the major topic when it comes to the Mets and the third baseman because the Cubs and Mets heated up talks a little bit and started to heat up again. Matt Chapman is a very intriguing player for the Mets to look into. And I think if the Mets had their choice and if all the cost of either one of the third basemen, I think they would choose Matt Chapman over Bryant and Suarez. So when it comes to Matt Chapman, why do the Mets want him? Why would they want to give up so much for Matt Chapman? We'll go over a trade proposal that I would I got into that I, I would be willing to give up for Matt Chapman. But to look at Matt Chapman and his career stats, we're going to look at it right now. In 2017, 84 games, 14 home runs, 40 RBIs, batted 234. Just came up pretty good. It's really good in 84 games. Not bad at all. Then you look at 2018, 145 games. 24 home runs, 68 RBIs, batted 278. Excellent year. Very good year. Very solid year. And he's a great defensive third baseman. What else can you ask for? But let's go to 2019. In 2019, 26 years old, 156 games, 36 home runs, 91 RBIs, batted 249. And he was an all-star. Excellent year. No doubt about it. In 2020, in a shortened season, played 37 games. Had a couple of uh, injury issues, a little bit about his hip, but he's 27 years old. He hit 10 home runs, 25 RBIs with, with an injury and batted 232. Now, again, his average, you know, fluctuates, you know, since 2018, it was 278, 2019, 249, and in 2020, 232. Now, when you look at those stats, it's like, well, obviously, offensively, he, he's a monster. He's one of the best players on Oakland's team. Why wouldn't you want this guy at third base? Because he's going to cost a lot. But the Mets might be willing to give more to get a guy like Matt Chapman, especially when he, he has control. We'll go over his contract in a few minutes. But when it comes to his stats and his projected stats for 20 this is what baseball references came up with. 28 years old, 23 home runs, 62 RBIs, batted 252. So average did go up to 252. Not bad. Solid year. 
I think that if you if you look at the 23 home runs, 62 RBIs, I think in a lineup that surrounds him with a better core, his RBIs will go up. More people on base, more runs to drive in. It just makes sense. So I think the RBIs can be, go up and possibly the home runs because Oakland's a bigger ballpark than City Field. And I think Chapman can probably hit about between 28 to 32 home runs and probably knocking about 80 to 90 RBIs especially with the team that the Mets put around them, especially the guys that are in front of them in the lineup also. It just makes it that much better. And just imagine Matt Chapman next to Lindor on the left side of the infield. I mean, there's no balls getting through. That's how good Chapman is. That's how good Lindor is. Your left side of the infield can be a Robin Ventura, Ray Ordonez type of situation. That's how good it is. That's how good it can be on the left side of the infield. Jeff McNeil is solid, depending on the DH. If Even if Alonzo plays first, Alonzo's not great, but I will take that infield of Chapman, Lindor, McNeil, and Alonzo. Now, if the DH is in, in place in 2021, somehow, some way, Smith can play first base, and now you got a really good infield, one of the best in the game when it comes to defensively. And to go back to Matt Chapman and why the Mets – Probably the biggest reason why they want him, besides the offensive numbers and the def- defensive numbers when it comes to him wanting being the best third baseman in the league, his contract. It is very, very team-friendly. In 2021, he would be making $6 million, $6.49 million in 2021. And in 2022 and 2023, he is arbitration eligible, ARB2 and ARB3. So the Mets would have him under team control for three more years at the least. And he would become a free agent in 2024 at the age of 31. At the age of 31. But if the Mets hold on to Vientos and expect him to progress in the minor leagues, by that time, Vientos might be able to fill his spot and you don't have to pay Mac Chapman a lot of money. And Vientos can fill into that third base role. But the contract is one of the biggest reasons why the New York Mets would be willing to give up more than they would have to give up for Brian or Suarez. And you're like, all right, great. We can get Chapman. But what is the price of Chapman that the Mets would have to give up to get him? Well, if you look at it right here, Mets would obviously get Matt Chapman. The Athletics would get J.D. Davis, Ronnie Mauricio, which is the number one ranked prospect in the Mets system, Thomas Zapucky, the number eight in the system, and Carlos Cortez, the number 17th ranked in the Mets system. Now, you would say, well, I mean, it's not Beatty, it's not Alvarez, it's not Matthew Allen, it's not... You could pick the guy in the top 10 of the Mets farm system and say, why would it be these guys? Well, if you look at Oakland's roster, you can put, you can give them, you can give them JD Davis that will slot into Chapman's spot at third base. Ronnie Mauricio is projected to be up this year in the next year or so when it comes to shortstop. Everybody needs pitching, and we know Oakland loves their pitchers. Thomas Zipucky, left-handed pitcher, ranked eighth in the Mets system. That would be a perfect addition to their to their team and to their roster. And then Carlos Cortez is raking in the Australian League this winter. And he's very good defensively. He's an infield. He's a second baseman, but you can move him around probably at second or third because he probably will fill out in his body and probably be a good player for them. And that's what I would give up. Now, you can, you know, move a prospect around. Maybe it won't be Zapucky. It might be somebody else. Maybe they would want a JT Jin. Now, I know that's tough to think about, but at the end of the day, if you can have Matt Chapman on this team for three years, exactly when this team can be World Series contenders in the next three years, it's a no-brainer. Matt Chapman is an all-star type player. That's the one of the guys you want to fill – Fill into this core that the Mets are trying to build here with Lindor, with Conforto, with McNeil, with Alonzo, with Dominic Smith. This is what you want to do. You want to win. I'm tired of, well, let's not worry. Let's not give up these prospects. 
why are we caring about prospects so much that we're willing to not get one of the best third basemen in the league because we're going to worry about somebody who's going to come two, three, maybe four years from now to help this team? And let's really think about it. Where is Mauricio going to play? Now, he's, all indications that he's filling out into his body, he's getting bigger, so he's probably going to turn into a third baseman. But you also have Mark Vientos in your system, and you have Matt Chapman. So you have a replacement for Chapman if Chapman leaves in three years. So Ronnie Mauricio is a good person and a good prospect to put in any deal, no matter if it's Suarez or Bryant or Matt Chapman type of package. And I just think, and there was a little talk about when it came to uh, Chris Bryant and the Cubs that Peterson could potentially be in that deal. I don't like that at all, especially for a rental when it comes to Bryant. At least if you want to put Peterson in the deal, I would put it in a Matt Chapman type of deal. I don't. I wouldn't want to. That would be a less uh, worst case scenario. But I would definitely would put Peterson in this deal if they re- if Oakland really wants him. And I would take out Zapucky and keep him in in our farm system for Chapman. I would do that. So to recap, guys. Matt Chapman to the Mets is probably the least likely out of the Suarez, Brian, or Chapman type of deal that the Mets could look at for a third baseman. But I think it's really intriguing to think about the Mets possibly talk to Oakland about Chapman. And the reason why I think is because Chapman is a better third baseman than Suarez. Offensively, you can choose who you like. I do like Chapman. But Chapman got the control. He's a little younger. Than Chris Bryant, oh, he's a little younger than Suarez, and it just makes to me it just makes sense that I would be willing to give up with the control of Chapman these type of prospects. That's my take on Matt Chapman, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash on that like button. And if you're enjoying my content, and want to see more videos to come, get your notifications when I post my videos and when I go live, guys. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you again for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.